Hello, everybody, and welcome back to yet another cast. Guys, today I am bringing to you a replay that was submitted in my Discord. Ignore this, Commander. You don't see this. This isn't a thing. Sometimes in my replay, uh, in my cast, I will ask my viewers to imagine things, and other times I will ask them to ignore things. But uh, I was asked by my someone in my community who will remain nameless to uh, cast this 1v1 on Winter Duel. So, uh, guys, this is a small map. This is definitely Winter Duel, I think, fits it perfectly because we have a tiny... Uh, tiny area of, of uh, operations here. The combat is probably going to be swift and deadly. And uh, the two players, these are two players that are actually, uh, that are viewers from my channel, just like you. They came and joined my Discord, and now they're playing on TAF every single day. Guys, we have players of all skill levels in our community. Please come join the Discord. Uh, be part of the community. We'd love to have you. We would love to, uh, maybe you'll even appear in one of my casts. Who knows? Anything could happen. But guys, the community is growing. Uh, I love this game. I'm trying to share my love for this game with the world. And uh, you too can relive your childhood nostalgia in real time in 2024. It's happening. It's real. But uh, let's jump into the game here. In pink, we have Fake Bob. Uh, I often make the joke that I wish he would bring the real Bob to the party because fake Bob uh, obviously obviously uh, kind of standing as a substitute for the real man. But here in uh, orange, I feel like I'm always butchering the pronunciation of this, but Ronaz Do Nakreen, who is core, and uh, I will say Ronaz with a much greedier start, he opted to take five mexes before he even started his kbot lab on a map this small that is a uh, well it's a decision i can't say if it's a good decision or not i suppose we'll find out in due time but i do have to say uh, ronaz uh as a player is a little rough around the edges but i i think this guy could one day, if he if he keeps practicing, become one of our resident escalation legends. I, I feel like he has a good understanding of the game, and uh, his macro is really superb. So, uh, yeah, keep a lookout for this guy. This guy, I think, is a rising star. Fake Bob uh, could be a rising star if he would get real Bob onto the onto the keyboard here start playing his best but uh one thing i will say that fake bob's doing that's really smart here is uh he built this flea early on and the flea in escalation is uh all it does is reclaim uh reclaim uh obstacles and corpses and rocks and trees so uh i think orange could have done that as well have a uh the might, the core equivalent, just reclaiming some trees and rocks and things, but uh, that will give Fake Bob perhaps a little bit of an early economic advantage. But I like what Ronaz is doing here. This turret, very well placed to cover the entire entrance of that uh, of that valley. So nice job by Ronaz. Now on this map. Obviously, it's tiny. This this map is like like a 50th of the size of, of some of the maps I cast, or at least that's how it feels. Um, but one thing I've seen on this map that can work really well is that uh, in Escalation, Thuds have the ability to traverse very steep terrain. So K-Bots in general can traverse steeper terrain than vehicles, but like this is like a cliff right here. So getting some thuds uh, to walk over the cliff, and the thud bullets also arc and can hit uh, mexes up on the uh, plateaus there, which definitely could play a part in this game. But either way, 
right now, both players just uh, building up their forces, slowly expanding. Um, on this map, the way that you use your commander uh, matters a lot because it's so small. Uh, you need to use your commander efficiently. The D gun will come into play quite a bit. Renaz already building those thuds, so maybe he knows that uh, thuds can walk up 90 degree angles. But uh, okay, Renaz building a Punisher here. Uh, it's that's a bit of a risky play on only 17 metal per second, but. Uh, if he can finish it in time, I think that that could be a really strong option. Um, yeah, I don't know about this. Uh, it's it's an investment. It's a huge investment at only six minutes into the game. And uh, however, he, he is using his commander well. One thing I want to say is that Runaz has brought his commander forward to the front and I think that is a much better option on this map just because of the the choke points your commander is a resource and you want to use them uh, to full effect on a map like this a lot of times it's called winter duel it should probably be called commander duel because uh, it's often the case that commanders get very close to degunning one another on a map like this where uh, you are in such close quarters to your opponent. But I do like the Ronaz, even though he's building this Punisher and it's uh, it's a huge investment. I like that he's he's not over committing to it. He's only got one K-Bot on it. So um, it won't massively screw his economy. But now using his commander, like I said, on this map, the commander will play a role and uh, also, like I said on this map, commanders will meet in the middle. But uh, I don't think the peewees can walk up this. Only the thuds can. The thuds and the hammers can walk up that hill. And I wonder if Renaz even understands that they can do that. But uh, yeah, I like what Renaz is doing here. MAKs very decent frontline unit using his commander very aggressively yeah this, this map is so silly yeah the combat is just uh very very close and micro intensive one tiny mistake and uh, you will lose and thuds also feel quite oppressive on this map as they can outrange almost anything and everything at the early stages. Even even uh, Rocco's they can outrange. And uh, but Ronaz moving forward. Oh my God! The commanders are in D gun range. Holy cow! Fake Bob wants to be careful. These MAKs no slouch. The amount of DPS these do is high, but a nice D-Gun will take out both of them. Oh my god, <laughs> these commanders doing a little do -si do here in the middle. A nice dance between the two players, weaving in and out of combat like uh, some sort of ballerina. Here's Renaz, who is at half health now. Five kills to his name. But it's so difficult to send units forward on a map like this because they will just get degunned. So all of that investment going down the drain in a uh, flash of light. Renaz perhaps moving his commander through this northern approach. That would be an interesting strategy. And by interesting I mean dog shit because now there is an HLT. And uh, commander's not so great against HLTs. So now, Renaz with a nice idea, but it will fall short as uh, this Punisher, very close to completion. The battle continuing to rage in the very center of the map, but now Ronaz does not have his commander. It's a bit like playing chess, where the commander is the queen. 
Uh, it's like playing chess without the queen. It's uh, it's just much harder. It's not that you can't win without your queen, but uh, commander such a strong piece in this sort of heavily microed skirmish engagement. Weapons that can just one-shot units. What are you doing, Ronaz? I don't like this at all. <laughs> I don't like this at all. Ronaz attempting to, to use his commander for the D-gun on the HLT, but thinking better of it, another second or two, and he would have been gone. So fake Bob already with four kills on his commander. Ronaz will certainly be forced to retreat after that. Somewhat of a tactical blunder, but it's still... He is still in the game because this Punisher, after ages, is very, very near completion. He needs to micro his units here. He will all lose all of those without much recourse. And now Pink has good control of the map, but this Punisher does finish just in time, and now... It is, uh, it is really a race against time for, for Fake Bob to kill this Punisher before it uh, absolutely immolates everything. The, uh, the Sentinel, his army, his construction, K-Bots, his uh, Solar Collector, maybe even this Geo. We'll have to check the range. Let's see. Okay, it doesn't look like it can quite hit that, but as you can see, this whole sphere of influence now a no-fly zone, in a manner of speaking, for Mr. Fake Bob. As that HLT, which has caused so much heartache for our orange player, will go up in smoke. So, Fake Bob asking in the chat, how did you get the medal for that? The way that he, the way that Orange got the medal for this was that he just had one constructor building it for like a massive amount of time. I mean, I guess it wasn't that massive, but it was it was like seven minutes. So he wasn't investing that much into it. He was he was investing into it very slowly over a long period of time, and it eventually finished. But uh, it, I, it, that was a good move. If he had actually used more constructors or used his commander to build this, I don't think it would have worked as well. Because then he would have had to stop producing units. The sign of a good player in Escalation is the ability to uh, tech up both your economy and your defenses and your game plan while still building units. Uh, you will see a lot of players that are less experienced or that are just not as good because uh, let's let's be honest, some people play this game for decades and they still do this. Um, they'll stop everything that they only work on one project at a time. So maybe that project is building units, or maybe it's upgrading to T2, or maybe it's building a, a Punisher, uh, or whatever it is that you know that's it's a one person Andy, right? Like a one job Andy. Like I can only do one task at a time. Uh, and uh, you have to be able to multitask to be a good Escalation player. And speaking of multitasking, Ronaz now going air. So uh, Ronaz in a good position, I think. He's got control of the middle uh, with this Punisher. He's got plenty of thuds. And uh, Fake Bob about to finish his own plasma defense, but... The advantage that Orange has now is that he's on air, and we'll have to see what he wants to do with it. There's some options. He could build bombers. Uh, that would, you know, potentially allow him to bomb the geothermal, some of the wind generators, and uh, even maybe the, the factory here. But he could also uh, build transports. And transport some units. Actually, I don't think that would work so well. Yeah, the map is too small for transports. It's got to be bombers. Um, and the bombers have to get a lot done immediately in the first run. Because after the first run, the, the jig is up. But uh, yeah, I think Renaz probably not aware that Fake Bob's so close to finishing his own 
Guardian. That will equalize the playing field. So this thing will finish just in time to push back Orange. As I said, Thuds do play a large role in this kind of game. But yeah, Renaud's really pumping out bombers. He's got four different KBOT constructors on this. That is all he's doing. He's uh, basically stopped dud production. But he doesn't really need any more of these against the Guardian. They're not going to be very useful anyway. And uh, in fact, he needs to keep these out of range of the Guardian. So that he doesn't lose his army for free. But once these bombers finish, it will depend heavily on how much he can get accomplished with them. Really is a uh, bomber micro in uh, TA and OTA and escalation. is a, It's a skill, and the best players know how to use this skill very effectively. So good bombing micro means he could get a lot of damage done, but bad bombing micro means that uh, this is a huge investment that uh, if it doesn't pay off, we'll probably put him pretty far behind as fake Bob already moving to T2. Looks like the replay was paused momentarily. But now, Arnaz moving up the west side. He's got to be careful. This Guardian, its range, can it can actually target those thuds if Fake Bob is paying attention. And it looks like he is paying attention. The Guardian will start sniping thuds. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't like what Fake Bob's doing. He's being a little indecisive. He started with Advanced KBOT Lab. Now he's going into Aircraft Plant. So maybe having the same idea as Renaud's, but doing it so much later, it's just uh, Renaud's is way ahead on this on this strategy. Looks like he has at least eight to ten bombers already, and uh, again, there's not a single bit of air defense to be found anywhere. Not a single defender, not a single uh, jet throw. Uh, or even a fighter or anything. So these bombers could have a good time. This is, I think, going to decide the game. What happens from here? Orange has a lot of responsibility to use these correctly. And I think Pink definitely going to be panicking here. Yeah. Nice bomber micro, I think. He, he took out the, uh, took out the mechs or the lab, and some units and some wind generators, and probably going for the Geo next, or I hope he is, but this is so many bombers. I think Fake Bob caught a little off guard, but uh, nice job. That was a... Uh, it was pretty close, like it was a pretty close game. Um, but guys, even in 1v1s, you've got to build air defense. I think that's the lesson that I will leave you with. Build air defense, even if you uh, don't think you'll need it. Just having a little air defense in, in case can really make the difference between victory and defeat. But uh, overall, uh, great job by both players. I think Renaud's had a better strategy. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next cast.